This mini PC has a Core i7 processor, the chassis is so small it makes other mini PCs look gargantuan, and it has its own internal battery backup. And if you want more ports, you can throw it into a magnetic dock just like that. This little Kados Mine PC has been one of the most requested systems that we go take a look at, and also one of the most controversial. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the Kados Mind PC. It is super small, there is a ton of innovation inside of this thing, some of it is really good, and some of it I think are areas for improvement. I can't think of another mini PC that elicits such a visceral reaction if either people love it or they can't stand it as this Kados mini PC. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Kados Mind, but also we're gonna take a look at the Mind Dock, which is an optional accessory that you definitely pay for, and I almost kind of feel like it should be included in the price. And this dock is what promises to be part of a larger ecosystem, but we really haven't seen that ecosystem yet, and I think I have some ideas on how to make it much more useful. And before we get too far in this, I do wanna point out that Kados did send us this unit. Now, on one hand, you could say that that means that they are sponsoring this video, but we're not getting tens and tens of thousands of dollars to go and do a review of this. It actually costs us more money to go and produce this video and have the studio and all that kind of stuff than it does to just have this unit. On the flip side, we had the STH YouTube members who have helped support us in being able to buy some things like the SSD that we're gonna show you in this. And so I wanna thank them for their support in sponsoring this video. Let's get to the hardware so we can look at the sucker. Okay, so let's start out with the size of this mini PC because the size of this is absolutely crazy. So uh, here, this is the standard Raspberry Pi case and just kind of give you an idea, it's actually not that much bigger than the standard Raspberry Pi case. I mean, it's definitely larger kind of on the outer dimensions, but it's definitely not as high. It's nowhere near as tall. And bringing that over to something like a mini PC, here's a uh, the Azrock Nook that we just looked at, the Meteor Lake one. And you can see that it's definitely a little bit longer, but on the other hand, it's way, way, way shorter. And uh, something like a Minis Forum, let's go take a UM790 Pro over here, which is also bigger. And uh, we're just gonna go stack that up. And this is like way smaller. I mean, it takes absolutely way less space. The idea is that you can go and stick it into your pocket and it maybe is a little bit bigger than an iPhone 15 Pro Max or whatever, but um, you know, it's not appreciably bigger. So maybe you could go put it in a pocket if you have large pockets. But with this smaller space, you both get things that you probably wouldn't expect, but you also don't get things just due to the space that you might expect. So it's definitely more interesting than you might think. And let's start with just the outside of this case. So the front, you have a LED power indicator and a uh, power button, which is pretty big. It's a little bit recessed, it looks really nice. And the overall packaging of this, by the way, is super nice. On the side, you get some vents, but let's get to the rear of this because I think that's what people want to see most. Okay, so looking at the back, uh, you get two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A ports, pretty standard, but only uh, one main video output on the base unit, which is an HDMI port. Then over here, you see two USB Type C ports. The one on the edge is a USB 2 port, but it's also your USB power delivery in. It can also run in DisplayPort alternate mode. The port next to that is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port as well. So it's a 10 gigabit port. It also has power delivery in, and you can run it in DisplayPort output mode. So I think that the idea is that you use this edge one as your USB 2 as like your power input most likely. And if you have a display that can also power it, well, maybe you can do that as well. And the power adapter for this is actually kind of a nice little unit. and it's it's a USB-C power, so a lot of folks want to see USB-C power, and that's exactly what you get. You get a USB power delivery uh, little box like this. But let's be clear, with the base unit, that's basically all you get. And frankly, four USB ports, one HDMI port, that's not a lot these days. And so I think what a lot of folks are going to do is if you buy one of these systems, you're also going to get the dock for it. And I totally think that this should be an included accessory. We're gonna talk pricing and stuff later in this video, but it's like $180 right now. But before we get to that, we're gonna talk about how it connects. And the way that it connects is on the bottom of this, you're gonna see that we have a mind connector. Now this has all kinds of different connectivity, including PCIe connectivity and all that, um, to be able to go and to connect to accessories, which is awesome. It's also something that hides another little feature that's in this. Okay, so let's talk about what's inside the system. Now there are two different versions. There's kind of like a base version and then there's a premium version. This is the premium version. And with the premium version, we have a Core i7-1360p. There's also another option with a Core i5-1340p. Now the Core i5 gets 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 memory. This premium version gets 
32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 as well. If you ever see LPDDR5, that means it's not SOD memory, so you cannot expand this yourself. The standard version gets a 512 gig SSD, the premium version gets a one terabyte SSD. And if you're thinking that you would want more storage, but you like the idea of having such a small chassis like this, well, you can pop this little thing on the bottom, open it up, and inside you can put another M.2 2230 or 30 millimeter SSD. And if you want to learn more about this drive, we should have a review of it on the main site. And if we're being honest about it, this little M.2 2230 slot is something that I wish we had on more mini PCs. You don't have to open up the system to get inside, you just go and pop this little magnetic case, which is super easy to do. Now, the other big feature inside this is that it has a 5.55 watt hour battery, which is, uh, it's pretty darn tiny. But the idea is that you can go and put this into a sleep mode and then uh, just kind of walk around with it and not have to actually power down the entire system. It should last something like 25 hours or something in sleep mode. Although if you add other devices, it's probably not gonna last that long. Now, of course, if you have a power outage, this will stay up because you have the internal battery for a very short amount of time, but probably enough time to go and save work and shut stuff down. At this point, a lot of you are gonna be looking at it like, hey, uh, why don't you just get a laptop? And I think that is a very valid question. So let's be very clear on that. And I think that's like one of its big competition points that it needs to differentiate from. And we're gonna talk about that more in our key lessons learned. But let's keep going on to how I think most people are gonna use this. So on the bottom of this, there's also this little connector. This little connector has things like PCIe and you use it with a dock. Now, the the docking mechanism for this is actually pretty slick. You literally just pop it on just like that and it's magnetic, so it's now in place. You don't really have to go and plug anything in or anything like that. And the overall package I think is awesome. So a couple things that you get with this. So first uh, over here, you get a volume knob with a little clicker. On this side, you get a fingerprint reader, which is always kind of nice. And then you get a couple other big features, right? You get a USB type A and this is only five gigabit, so a gen one port. You also get uh, the headphone jack or combo jack up front. Over here, you get an SD card reader, which is awesome. Now in the back, you definitely get a lot more ports as well and some really needed ports. So for example, you get a USB power delivery. So this is a USB-C port, but it's only a power delivery import. You then get two more USB 3 Gen 1, uh, five gigabit per second type A ports, two more HDMI 2.0 ports, and then you get a two and a half gig ethernet port as well. Now, once this is all together, uh, again, here's your NUC, here's your uh, Kata's mind. And it's, uh, it's definitely substantially bigger. And it's kind of weird that just adding that kind of IO means that you're adding like this much space, right? Now, aside from the mind dock, Kata says it's gonna have a line of accessories. And those could include things like an eGPU and all kinds of stuff. I just wanna point out though, that I think this is kind of the wrong way to build this ecosystem because what Kata is doing is they're trying to sell this into like big enterprises or something like that, or small businesses. And I think the vision of this eventually is that you take this out of its little dock and then you go bring it over to a conference room and you go put it into something for like doing VoIP calls or they have another eGPU option or something like that if you need more power or I, I don't really know what the idea is here. What would be super cool is if there was a mine dock that just had a PCIe connection. I mean, the one thing that most mini PCs don't have is the ability to go add whatever kind of PCIe device that you want, whether that's a 10 gig NIC, 25 gig NIC, maybe you wanna put a 100 gig NIC, maybe you wanna have an eGPU or something like that. Sure, you can use Oculink, sure you can use Thunderbolt, but this in some ways is a little bit cooler. Frankly, I don't want an overpriced eGPU chassis. What I really want is the ability to go add something and make this a more customizable platform. But this overall is pretty high quality. I mean, if you turn it upside down, it's not held into place by any latches or anything like that, just magnets, and it's staying no problem. But with that, let's at least get to the performance next. Okay, now on the performance of this thing, you're gonna see that this is the Core i7 1360p. We've looked at a number of 1360p systems before, and it definitely seems like this is a little bit more thermally constrained than some of the other platforms. At the same time, you do get a 12 core, 16 thread processor, which is pretty darn decent. And the performance of this is plenty fine for doing your basic office tasks. Now, of course, if you're just gonna plug this in, not move it and just, you know, use the 1360 as an office PC, just kind of that just sits there all the time, then this is a very expensive way to go do that. Something that we did notice though, which was interesting was that when we changed changed the power profile from a balance profile up to a performance profile, ran Geekbench back to back, uh, we got almost the exact same results. So there clearly is not a lot of like extra thermal headroom in this and these things are being constrained just to kind of make sure that you're able to go and fit a Core i7 in a tiny package like this. With that, let's get to the power consumption and noise. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the Kadas Mind power consumption and noise. Now, this is a story that has dramatically changed, so much so that we had to re-record the section of this video. The reason for that is that when we originally got the system and we set it all up and we just said, okay, well, how, how is it anyway? We found that the overall power consumption at idle was somewhere in that nine watt range. However, we could get power consumption all the way up to about 50 watts before it would come back down after it would throttle. Now, the downside of this is that in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, that saw the overall noise and stuff go all the way into the 41, 42 dBA range. Or to give some sense of how loud that was, it's about as loud as when the air conditioners come on at full force, that's about how much noise we would get just from this little system at about one meter. But then in Windows, we went onto the Kodos Mind app and we did the really simple upgrade process, both for the dock as well as the Mind itself. We did all the firmware, all the BIOS updates, and we kind of played a little bit with just kind of putting on a very balanced setting instead of going for the all out performance mode that we might use if we were doing something like benchmarking. And when we did that, this system completely changed. You're gonna see that the system over here, I don't know if you can see this, but is actually just close to 45 minutes of runtime. And it's been running flat out, running StressNG under Ubuntu 24.04 for almost 45 minutes. And the overall noise is only about 38 to 39 dBA. It did ratchet up a little bit over that process, but this thing is running at 100%. Now, if I move over to the side, you're gonna notice that the overall power consumption is now into that 30 watt range. So we're definitely not at that 50 watt range, which is very important. That lower power consumption also means that we have less noise and it makes it very reasonable. I would 100% have this system desk side now, whereas when it was in the 41, 42 dBA range, I thought that was a little bit too loud. Now, one thing I wanna point out, which is really interesting when you watch this, is that the overall frequency is bouncing a lot. So this would not necessarily be my choice for like a router or firewall, but I don't think that's really the idea of the system anyway. And you can see from these purple bars right here that the frequency on these things is going up and down like crazy. We're seeing frequencies go down into like 800 megahertz. We're seeing E cores hit maybe 1.3 gigahertz, whereas the P cores are maybe that 17 gigahertz range. Now, of course, this has been running for like 45 minutes. So we're in that very much a very steady state environment. When you do have that early, you know, first minute or two that you're running a hard workload, you can get into higher clock speeds, but I just wanna point out that at steady state, um, you know, this is what it looks like. Now we did lose a little bit of performance, somewhere in that like five to 8% range when we dropped the power, but frankly, uh, I would totally give up my five to 8% performance on a system like this to get lower power consumption and also less noise, especially if you want it to be a desktop. This, by the way, with the new balance settings and all that kind of stuff, all the new BIOS firmware, all that stuff, this is something that would have been uh, harder to recommend before we did the update, and it's much easier to recommend after we did the update, at least from a power consumption and performance standpoint. Okay, now with all of these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. And so what do we learn with this? Let's start with the biggest one by far, I think, which is price. The premium version of this is currently 1099. Now, of course, there are discounts and stuff like that available, but at 1099, it's definitely a pretty high for a 1360p system. And that's only part of it because the dock is currently 179, which makes this entire thing pretty much about $1,280 for this entire setup, which is kind of crazy for this. And to me, 1280 for this package is just crazy town. It should be significantly less than this. The standard version right now is $799 plus another $179 for the dock. But even at that, at you know just under $1,000, I think that's a lot for a package like this. To me, I think we've reviewed a number of mini PCs that are significantly less expensive, have at least comparable I.O. We even have ones with fingerprint readers and all that kind of stuff that are significantly less expensive than this. Those systems also offer more power and you might be using Thunderbolt 3 instead of this kind of fancy dock. But on the flip side, this doesn't have Thunderbolt. Now in terms of docks, I really think that this one should be included, but there is another option that has a just kind of ton of expansion. And one of the big expansion things it has is it has a desktop GPU, which is a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 Ti. And that one has more expansion like USB 4 and just has more expansion than just this little dock. And it's about $900. On one hand, I certainly think that that's a more useful dock, but even if you did get that mine dock, just to give you an idea, 
this thing is starting to compete with things like the uh, the Asus ROG NUC or something like that, right? So something that is a NUC that is gaming NUC or something like that. And I guess the big difference is that you can move your compute module with a battery. And let's talk about this battery for a sec. I totally get the idea of moving conference room to conference room, putting your system in sleep so you can keep something open and a view that you want to show off like really easily and putting into other accessories and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but at some point, you know, you're competing with laptops. Those laptops tend to have bigger batteries and you can do things things like not just go and move conference room to conference room, but you can also go onto planes and stuff like that and still use your laptop. You also get a keyboard and monitor with that. And there are external docking solutions for a lot of those. And one other tiny thing, this is the premium version for 1099 and it came with Windows 11 home, not pro. Like what the heck is that? But overall, what are the key lessons learned here? And let me give you a couple. I think number one, this is a really cool product. Kados did a great job of having a little dock and the overall product feels like it is very high quality. Like this does not feel cheap in any way. This feels like somebody has sat down, thought about it and designed this to be like kind of like a Windows version of like an Apple thing that has some kind of cool accessories and stuff like that. I mean, they definitely went all out on the design on this thing. On the other hand, it's just too expensive. Then that's just what it is. And that can be fixed if they're willing to take lower margins or do whatever it takes to go and sell this thing. I think at a lower price, this is certainly useful. And frankly, I love the idea of a mini PC vendor doing something different. I mean, we have so many boxes that are all about the same size. Having something that's this big is kind of a cool idea. And the fact that they came up with this little idea to go and have a M.2 SSD on the bottom, I think this is one of the best features and best innovations of this entire series. But on the flip side, if you're paying for the battery to get more standby time, well, now you're directly competing with a laptop. And I don't necessarily necessarily know if a mini PC should aspire to compete with a laptop that also has a screen, a keyboard, trackpad, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't necessarily know that that's a great market to go after. But this is one where I definitely want to hear what you have to say. This is one where the team was kind of like, I don't know, it's different. Like, how, how do we compare this thing? Like, what do we do? And I think depending on the comparisons that you pick, it's either interesting or not interesting. And uh, there are definitely some room for improvement. And I'm just kind of giving mine. But if you have ideas, definitely put those down below. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.